How many wheels does this toy car have? There are many, not just four. These wheels have teeth on the outside, also known as gear. Most of the machines around us use gears to perform the intended work. Let us understand more about gears. I will pin this wheel. It rotates freely around the pin. This motion can be transferred to another wheel if they are in close contact with each other. But this contact may not always work, especially for higher speeds. Friction may wear the surface as well over time. To take care of this, let us attach this pointed profile to the wheel. Now, the motion of one wheel can be easily transferred at all speeds. A wheel with teeth on the outside is called gear. Instead of regular plastic gears, we will use gears laser cut from MDF sheet and some pins. Normally, gears are driven by a motor, but for now, we will rotate it by hand. Let us take this gear and pin it in the center. With little force, I can rotate it. Let us mark a black line like this. That way, we can measure the rotation of gear as it turns around. I moved it by 360 degrees or one rotation in an anti-clockwise direction and one rotation again but this time in a clockwise direction. Another identical gear can be placed like this on the right side. Rotating gear on the left will not have any effect on the gear on the right side. Let us place teeth of one gear in between the teeth of another one. This is also known as meshing the gear. We will call the gear on the left as A while gear on the right as B. Let us also place push pins next to the markings. That way we can count the number of rotations. One rotation of A also results in one rotation of B but with one change. B rotates in the opposite direction. This is true even if A is rotated multiple times, slower or faster. The gear A is called driver gear, while the gear B is called driven gear. Same thing happens when I rotate B as well. A rotates the same number of turns but in opposite direction. How about introducing another identical gear in between? Can you predict how B will move this time? Gear B now turns in the same direction as that of A. The number of rotations however remains unchanged. Now let us replace middle gear with another one, this time with more teeth. How will gear B react? Direction as well as number of rotation for B do not change. This is also true when we use middle gear with less teeth.
Middle gear is also known as idler gear. A gear placed between a driving and a driven gear to transfer motion without change of direction. Idler gear can be placed anywhere as long as it is meshed properly. How about introducing one more in between A and B? Can you find some relation between the number of gears between driven gear and driver and direction of rotation? Give it a try. Now let us look at gears of different teeth. This one with 20 teeth and this one with 40. One full rotation of gear C results in only half rotation of gear D. Right another way, one full rotation of gear D results in two rotations of gear C. This observation leads to another important concept, gear ratio. This is true even if I rotate gear C faster or slower, clockwise or anti-clockwise. One time, four times or even ten times. Ratio still remains the same. Relationship of two machine gears does not change. Effectively, gear ratio is the number of rotations of the driver gear to the number of rotations of driven gear. We use the word ratio to describe this constant relationship between these two values. A colon is used to show the gear ratio. The order of two numbers in the ratio is very important. What will be the gear ratio in this scenario? It will be 1 is to 2 instead of 2 is to 1. Can you find gear ratios for these pairs? Is there a relationship between the gear ratio and the ratio between teeth? Teeth can be used to find gear ratio as well. Number of teeth allows us to find the gear ratio without actually turning the gear. We can rewrite the gear ratio as teeth of driven gear to the teeth of driver gear. So far we have used only single gear meshed with another single gear to increase or decrease the speed of rotation. There is another way which we can use to achieve larger gear ratios. Gear trains. A small gear and large gear are glued together, one on the top of other. Gear trains often consist of multiple compound gears connected with each other. In this scenario, one full rotation of large gear on the left side results in eight rotations of gear on the right side. Other way, Eight rotations of gear on the right side results in one rotation of gear on the left side. In the next video, we will discuss transfer of motion across planes, torque, as well as other ways to create gears from everyday material. Thank you.